Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome as we join voices and hearts in praise to God at this Mass. We also extend a special welcome to Phoenix Anthony Davis and his family who will celebrate his baptism following this Mass. There was a clock in a restaurant window that had stopped a few minutes past noon. One day a patron asked the owner, do you know, know that the clock in your window has stopped? <clears throat> the owner answered, it hasn't been working for months, but you'd be surprised to know how many people look at that clock, think they are hungry, and come in to get something to eat. <laughs> Well, we know that there's more to life than satisfying our physical hunger. That is what Jesus is trying to tell us in today's gospel. They were content in having their stomachs filled. That's why he said to them, you are not looking for me because you have seen signs, but because you have eaten your fill of the loaves. The people wanted only what they wanted and not what Jesus wanted to give them. In our relationship with God, we must ask ourselves, are we interested in only getting, only in getting what God wants to give us or, or what we want? Notice um, we have to be willing to work for what God wants for us. And notice the word work. God cannot save us if we are too lazy or too busy or too indifferent to do our part. It requires work on our part, and maybe that's why you are here tonight. We are remembering and praying for Tony Wagner at this Mass, and tomorrow we pray for Ada Meister. Our sanctuary light will burn in memory of Andrew Neese. Our blood drive is this uh, coming Tuesday from 12 noon until 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., our Finance Committee members will meet in the St. Francis Room for their meeting. On Wednesday, our ladies have a meeting also at 6 p.m. in the Parish Hall. And lastly, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is this Friday morning from 8 until noon. Let us now turn our thoughts towards St. Joseph and ask his intercession. Your response is, pray for us. St. Joseph, Minister of Salvation. Pray for us. St. Joseph, Patron of the Poor. Pray for us. St. Joseph, Glory of Family Life. Pray for us. St. Joseph, Most Obedient. Pray for us. St. Joseph, Provider of the Son of God. Pray for us. St. Joseph, Zealous Defender of Christ. St. Joseph, may we strive to be like you and always do God's holy will. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Our opening song is number 325 in your songbook, I Am the Bread of Life.
Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. And with your spirit. Indeed, we come again to raise our hearts and minds to our Heavenly Father, knowing that he provides for us always. As we open our prayer, let us know that we are truly beloved by our Father in heaven. Lord Jesus, you came to show us the great works of our Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to follow you, to bring good to each other. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, fill us with your strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. with your unceasing kindness that for all of us who glory in you as our creator and guide you may restore all that you create keeping safe all that you restore but we ask this through our Lord Jesus who lives one God forever and ever Reading from the book of Exodus, the whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have gathered the grumbling, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, 
the Lord am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come. The glorious deeds of the Lord and His strength and the wonders that he wrought. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance, and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found Jesus across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are not looking, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, 
which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to Jesus, What can we do to accomplish these works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one that he has sent. So they said to Jesus, Just what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? Just what can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am this bread of life. Whoever comes to me never hungers, and whoever believes in me never thirsts. The Gospel of the Lord. I am this bread. These words are from our gospel this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Pope Francis said these words that I think they'd apply to what Jesus is speaking about. My choices, including those related to my day-to-day -day aspects of life, are related to a spirit that responds to a need that arises from looking at things, at people, and from reading the signs of the times, looking to the Lord to guide me in his way of governing. Yes, I'm sure with all the worries and concerns that Pope Francis has, Indeed, he has to be one that truly depends on God. And that's what Jesus is trying to get us to understand again today. Because this gospel we have today is right after in the gospel we had last week where Jesus feeds thousands of people. And of course, what do they understand from this? This is the question. What do people take from this? Well, today we see Jesus saying, look, you're not looking for me because you have seen a sign telling you something about God. No, no, you just want more bread. That's what you think I'm good for. Just a, a meal ticket, so to speak. No, Jesus wanted us to understand the sign. The sign of why and how all this was happening. Because of the great love of our Father who answers our needs. But he answers them through the spirits that he has created within each and every one of us. Yes, Jesus had faith and of course that's the word he uses all the time faith in God and he says we have to have that kind of same faith faith is really a knowing a knowing that God just can do something no it's not that knowing God can do anything no it's a knowing that God will do something. 
God has already anticipated all the needs even before we know. God has provided through a spirit that he has created filling this world that these spirits can be in tune with his own and to solve then the needs of whatever it might be in our world. You see, we have to take our part in all of this. It's kind of like a little kid, you know, when you say, I want you to do this, or you tell them yes or no, they can do this or not. And then they come right back again and do the same thing or ask the same question again. And, and we say, look, didn't you hear me the first time? Well, that works with kids, but I think it also works with the children of God, too. Did we not hear Jesus the first time? That God works through all of us? That God reaches out to all of his children, caring about them, loving them, providing for them? That is the sign that Jesus wanted us to be seeing. Not that Jesus would keep working this bread all the time. No. You provide the bread. You respond to the will of God. You respond to a God who has given you a power to provide for all the needs of all of his children. Yes, this is what Jesus wanted them to understand. And don't you know, don't you know, they still mess it up. They come right back at Jesus and say, okay, Jesus, I, you know, the sign, whatever you're doing. Let me tell you about Moses. Moses gave people his bread from heaven. Now, you better best be getting about giving your bread, too. Jesus said, no, you didn't understand that sign either. It was God who gave that bread from heaven. And when God gives that bread, so he was giving through me, but it was because it was my faith and trust that I would do whatever I could, gather a few fish and bread, and God will take care of the rest which he did. And we all must take our part in bringing about the greatness of God for everyone in our world. How many needs are there of people? How many people wake up in the morning just wondering where their next meal is going to be? Should we just say, okay, God, do something about this? God said, well, what about you? What part do you got in all this? And maybe I don't have to do so much because I already took care of this by creating you. Maybe you can provide for all of this. And then we can say like Jesus did, I am this bread that came down from heaven. In the name of the Father, to the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand as together we profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in your Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, we bring our needs to our Father in heaven. For the church, may it seek to satisfy the deepest longings of Christians who hunger and thirst for Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For business and government leaders, may they strive to alleviate the hunger and needs of the poor, refugees, and victims of war. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace, may God end the violence in our cities and bring forth peace so that all can live in safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are participating in the Olympics, may God protect them from harm and help them to use their gift fully for God's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, may God be their source of strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, for the grace to be satisfied and appreciate all the blessings that God has given us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Walter Hermish, Tony Wagner, and Ada Meister, may they receive their eternal reward in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, may the greatness of your power ever work through all the good that we try to do for one another. For indeed, you call upon us to bring your love for our world forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song is number 423 in your songbook, Canticle of the Sun.
Pray that my brothers and sisters that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, that accepting this sacrifice from your people, that we all may be made an eternal offering to you. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives one God forever and ever. <coughs> the Lord be with you. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that always and everywhere we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, for out of your great love for all of us, Jesus humbled himself, being born of a virgin, and, true, and through his suffering on the cross, he has freed our world from a belief in unending death, and by rising from the dead, he has revealed that we are to share life with you forever. And so with angels and archangels and all the host of heaven, we join them praising you as we sing. create rightly gives you praise for through Jesus by the power and working of your spirit you have given life to all things and now you call us to be holy for you never cease to gather each of us to yourself therefore O Lord we humbly ask by the same spirit to make holy these gifts we have brought to you that they may become for us the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of Jesus, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we now look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the sacrifice of your church as we once again recognize the very sacrifice of Jesus for us all. Grant that we who are fed by the very body and blood of Jesus and now filled with his spirit may become one body, one spirit with Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her loving spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Maurice, and all of the saints. For it is on their prayers that we rely for your help each day. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation with you, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of everyone in our world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your church here on this earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all the people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family gathered here today, whom you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered everywhere in our world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, we ask that you give their spirit kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we all hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, surrounded by the light and love of Jesus, knowing the goodness of our Father forever. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Once again, the sign of our daily bread takes this form in a prayer that Jesus himself has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from every distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all in your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. As our will ever becomes one with the will of our Father, so we can bring his lasting peace for our world. Maybe a little sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We will be singing number 336 in your songbook, One Bread, One Body. Scattered and grown 
I just have one announcement. Sister, would you like to stand up? <laughs> I don't know if you saw it on the sign but, and maybe heard about it, but she celebrated her Diamond Jubilee this past week and she was recognized over at Oldenburg. And that's 60 years of service and dedication to the Lord and to the church. And we have been blessed, is it 10 years you've been here? We celebrated right after you. Twelve. Okay, so we celebrated shortly after she came. I remember that. So, but we've been blessed for the last twelve years to have her ministering among us. So we would just like to say congratulations and um, many more. My mother always told me. I said, Use your head for something besides just to hang a hat on. So reading all that I have about this virus and this uh, Delta variant and all that, how super infectious it might be, I'm just going to forego for maybe a couple of weeks at least until we see what happens with all this of going out and meeting you in very close quarters because I don't want to get sick and I know I don't want to be responsible for getting any of you sick or anything like that because they say even vaccinated people could have something to do with all of this. So I just don't want to be, uh, you know, responsible for any of that. So I wish you a very pleasant evening and a very pleasant week. And may you be the sign board that people can read to trust and have faith in our God in heaven. Let us now stand and pray. Accompany all of us with your constant protection, O God, for you have renewed us with heavenly gifts. In your never-failing care for each of us, make us all worthy to know our life with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks and be to God. Our closing song is number 420 in your songbook, Sing a New Church. Yeah.
you be 